So uh, welcome. I'm going to be explaining some common questions that you might have as an international student, and also what I do on a on a daily basis. And hopefully, I can help you out. First, so first question really is, what is an I-20? I-20 is also known, if you look up at the very top of the I-20, uh, in the right-hand corner, it will say Certific Certificate of Eligibility. And what that does is that lets, that tells immigration officers that you are eligible to study at Texas A&M University. Um, it's a little bit different from the visa, which I will explain a little bit later. But everything, all, all the information that is on your I-20 um, is really, really important for when you come, first come to the United States and then when you leave the United States and come back, say, if you're going on vacation. So it's really, really important that all of your information is updated on your I-20. So, for example, if you're going on something which is called CPT or Curriculum Practical Training, um, that needs to be on your I-20. Uh, after you graduate and you want to work, you will apply for something called OPT or Optional Practical Training, and that will need to be on your I-20 as well, too. So, it's very, very important that uh, all of your information is up to date. In addition, when you travel, uh, for those of you that are first coming to the United States, the I-20 you will get will have the DSO signature on the front page, but on the second page, there will be a blank left for a travel signature. Once you come to the United States and you start studying, you can get a travel signature, but it's also very important that once you come to the United States and you start studying and you want to leave the United States for a trip, going back home or whatever, um, that you also have a travel signature on the back of your page. And that travel signature is also good for one year. And that's generally the basics for an I-20. So the different parts of an I-20, of course, um, your family name, uh, and your first name and possibly a middle name, um, and then the country of birth and the country of citizenship. And in most cases, of course, for most of you, that will be the case that the country of birth and citizenship will be the same. But if that's different, um, it should be correct. But if it's not correct, then um, notify International Student Services or your DSO immediately, because that can be a problem. So make sure that your country of birth and your country of citizenship is the same. Uh, and then also make sure that your school code and your school um, campus is correct too. Texas a and is really big. We have, I think, five different campuses located um, in the state of Texas. We have the Health Sciences Center, we have um, the Galveston campus, and um, we also have the law school up in Dallas. And so where it says um, your school code, which is a three, um, which is a um, three digit suffix, make sure that that's correct and just also make sure that your campus address is correct too. Probably most of you will be coming here to College Station, which is good, but uh, for example, I know we have one student who's here in College Station, but he's at the Public Health, uh, I'm sorry, the Health Sciences Center. And so his I-20 campus is actually a little bit different, even though we're all on the, we're all here in College Station. Um, another thing to make sure is your level of education. Make sure that's correct, whether it's doctors, um, doctor degree or master's or bachelor's. Uh, and also your major and your major code as well, too. Um, so make sure that that's correct. Uh, and then lastly, probably the most important thing are is the finances and what's that mean. 
So it's hard to actually give a good example for a specific uh, what what the finances actually mean because it actually depends on your major and also what degree level you're in. But I'll kind of explain what you need in general and um, and hopefully that will help you out. So the finances you need to show if you're a new student is one full year um, of finances or finances for the fall semester and the spring semester. And how you show that can be um, varies from student to student. Most students who are who coming in and are doing a PhD, if they have a graduate assistantship or a research assistantship, uh, you can submit a letter to us at ISS and usually that covers, covers your first year of, um, of finances. But again, it, it generally, it kind of differs depending on what your major is. But, <clears throat> so there's, um, breaking it down, there's students' personal funds. And what that means is funds that are directly into your bank account. So if you have money in your bank account um, and you can show finances, um, that's what we look for. So things that we don't accept are loan letters um, or deposits that you can't withdraw for, let's say if I make a deposit and I can't withdraw that money in five years, that's another thing we can't accept. So it's something that you can access immediately. So if it's personal funds and your bank statement is with your name on it, that's great, that can be used. If it's uh, funds from the school, that would be like a scholarship, a fellowship, um, a graduate assistantship, or research assistantship. And like I said, if you're on a doctorate program, usually those cover your, your tuition and living expenses. Uh, and then uh, another is, um, which is also very common, is funds from another source, and that's mostly family. And that can be fine, but there's just a couple things you need. Um, is again, it has to be a bank account, and it has to be funds that can be withdrawn immediately. Um, and then we also need what's called an affidavit of support or some kind of support letter that your family member will fill out and complete and sign saying that I will support you in terms of study. And as long as we have those two things um, and it covers the full tuition amount, uh, then you're eligible to get your I-20. Most right now in terms of how much you need for one year is generally anywhere between thirty-two dollars and $36,000, and that's total for living expenses and tuition. Um, and again, the, the exact number differs a little bit depending on what your major is and what degree level you're in. If you're a bachelor's student, for example, then that number is a lot higher. That number is closer to 54000 to $56,000. So um, it did, it's a little bit different, but if you kind of know the process of what's acceptable and, um, and then getting those letters of support from family members, um, that will speed up your process in getting it.